Hello everyone, this is a video on how to take apart and replace or upgrade the hard disk in this HP Pavilion 15-CC541NA, otherwise known as product ID 2CU94EA, and then in the UK or the EU it's probably got a hash ABU, or a pound sign uh, ABU on the end. First things to watch out for, two hidden screws under uh, on the back. I'll show you the front of the machine, that's what the machine looks like. On the underside of the machine, at the back near where the hinges are for the screen, there are two hidden screws underneath the rubber pads for the feet. At the edge closest to the, or the side closest to the edge of the laptop I should say. So you need to lift the feet up right at the edge and take out those two screws. Then along the front of the laptop are three screws. <clears throat> and I believe that's all there is for this machine. There doesn't appear to be any screws under these. There also doesn't appear to be any further screws under the other bits of the ones we've already undone at the back. You'll now need a spudger or plastic tool or something. Do not use a screwdriver because they will gouge the plastic or the metal. And with difficulty, you need to get it down between this overhanging lip underneath the palm rest and the underside of the machine. And that's undone one of the clips. We need to go along and undo every clip all the way around the edge. This machine does seem to be one of the more difficult ones to undo. Gone are the days where you had an H uh, a Dell where you could just open it and replace parts just by undoing a window or a uh, an aperture on the underside of the laptop. Okay, I've got this side is undone. Just need to do the left side, my perspective left side. So that's now all undone, except for along the back here, which should be able to be just wiggled out. Although apparently with difficulty. And 
There we go, that's the underside of the machine off. And in the machine we've got one stick of RAM and a spare slot that you could put an additional bit of RAM into. The hard disk, which is what I'm into replacing. Interestingly, it has an M.2 uh, slot for a, a solid state SSD on a chip. There. That's the CPU. That will be BGA soldered onto the board, so you're not going to be able to replace that without a BGA rework station. Um, the cooling fan, the heat sink, that's probably a speaker there. Interesting, it looks, I oh know there'll be another speaker there, so two speakers left and right. That'll be the video lead there. That's probably power for the screen, maybe. Where does that go off to? No, that'll be power, that's the power socket. So power socket is there under this hinge and that's the power going into the board. Wireless card, SD card reader, USB, and the battery. Keyboard connector, probably touchpad connector there, and if you had a backlit keyboard, that's probably the backlight connector there. Onto the task, which is replacing this hard disk. We need to lift this up from this end, whilst also being very careful about this ribbon connector because we don't want to damage or break that. So I'm going to gently lift that up a little bit, so I'm only about that far away, and then pull it towards the battery a little bit, gently again because of this ribbon connector, and it will take the hard disk and its springy, uh, rubbery case out of these two lugs here. And now we should be able to lift the entire hard disk out, flip it over gently, and unplug the serial ATA connector. So that's the, the hard disk is now out, and we can remove its rubber side bits. There's the hard disk, and I'm going to be installing Admittedly, a not very high capacity SSD, but they don't need the, uh, the storage space. What you would need to do is put this in and then either use a Windows install CD and uh, install from fresh, or before you remove this, or if you've got an extra machine, a separate machine to do it on, and you'd need to clone the existing data from this drive onto this drive, and then you don't have to reinstall Windows and all your data will be there. Um, to do that, Having a USB to serial ATA connector is a good idea, and then using some software. Um, there used to be a free bit of software for home use called Macrium Reflect. Annoyingly, that's not free anymore, but they might have a trial version uh, that will work for the duration that you need it to, to work. So I'm going to clone the drive, and then uh, I'll be back once I'm ready to put the machine back together. If this video has already been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel, you don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. Okay, I am now back. I've cloned that drive onto this SSD. It's now the task of putting this back into the machine. What I have gone and done is forgotten which way round these go, so I'm just going to have to take a guess that it will be this way round. No, that is definitely not right. That bit there needs to... yeah, that, that'll do it. That bit there needs to uh, protrude, because that goes under these little lugs, or well, these lugs go in under these bits here. That is correct. Need to gently, being careful of this ribbon cable, plug that back in. The serial ATA into the drive. And again, being careful of the ribbon cable. Drop that back down. And those lugs need to go in. And then, when that's fully in this way, push down on the drive to put it
further down into the case. It should be a case, uh, no pun intended, of putting the cover back on. Or the case back on. So put it into place and then go round everywhere pressing to clip it back down everywhere and let's see if I can sort out that brightness that's a little bit too bright I think that's done so we've got the three screws along the front And then the two sneaky standard HP consumer laptop screws which sit underneath the feet at the back. That's one of them done. Another one done. So I very much hope now, if I switch this on, that it will start up with the previous details that were on the hard disk. Perfect, there we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope that your upgrade of the drive or replacement of a drive goes really well too.